Think of the plot of an epic story, one that would absolutely captivate and glue you to your seat. There might be family betrayal, political intrigue, temptation, conflict, and plots to discover the truth. Doesn't sound bad, right? That's the story of Joseph in Genesis, and it may be one of the most incredible accounts in the entire Bible. The story of Joseph is an epic retelling of a true underdog story. He's a young man called to greatness, fighting against any and every force that tried to stop him from seeing that calling through. He's sold into slavery by his brothers, only later to rise to power and become a leader in Egypt. Though it doesn't end there, beyond all these extraordinary circumstances, there's another layer to this story that I wanna to uncover tonight. A careful look at God's hand in Joseph's life reveals a divine foreshadowing. You see, the story of Joseph does more than just show us the actions of a faithful follower of God. It's full of messages that predict the life of the Messiah himself. That's the journey we're taking right now on Mysteries of the Messiah. To cover their crimes and to deceive their father, Joseph's brothers took his tunic and dipped it in the blood of a goat. The question is, why a goat? According to the rabbis, the reason is, is that it's connected to the goats that were offered on the Day of Atonement, especially the scapegoat. According to Jewish tradition, the day that Joseph's brothers came back to their father was actually the 10th day of the month of Tishrei, which is a day that later becomes Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And there's several other significant similarities. First of all, both goats were killed in the deserts. Both are associated with lots. The tunic that Joseph wore in Hebrew is called a ketonet, and it's the same Hebrew term that's used to describe the tunic worn by the high priests. But of course, there is more. Both of these goats are associated with forgiveness and reconciliation and repentance. But most importantly, both goats are connected to the Messiah. Because in Jewish tradition, one of the names of the Messiah is the son of Joseph, Mashiach ben Yosef. Because just like Joseph was rejected by his brothers and stripped of his tunic and ultimately suffers to bring salvation to his people, so it would be the same for the Messiah who is expected to come and to bring redemption to his people. So to understand this more, we have to understand the scapegoat that was offered on Yom Kippur. But what happened is in the temple in Jerusalem on the Day of Atonement, two goats of the same height and the same weight were placed before the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, and gold lots would be cast. One lot would say to the Lord, La Adonai, and the other would say La Azazel, for or to Azazel. The one that came up for Azazel would become the scapegoat. The high priest would lay his hands on the scapegoat, confess the sins of the children of Israel over it. It would be brought out, usually by a priest, into the desert, and it would be thrown off a cliff, bearing the sins of the people in order to bring atonement. But there's something incredible that happens in this that we learn from Jewish history found in the Talmud. 40 years before the destruction of the temple, something strange began to occur. Number one, the lot that was cast for the scapegoat or for the goat that was to be offered to the Lord in the temple came up in the wrong hand. That was seen as a sign that God was not happy with these sacrifices. But more significantly, there was a red cord that was placed in the temple and there was a red cord that was tied to the scapegoat. And when that scapegoat it was thrown over the cliff in the temple, the scarlet cord supernaturally turned from red to white. Why is that significant? Because of the verse in Isaiah, though your sins be as scarlet red, I will wash them white as snow. But the rabbis tell us that 40 years before the destruction of the temple, that cord stopped turning from red to white. 
The temple was destroyed in 70 AD. If you subtract 40 years from that, that is during the ministry, life, and death of Yeshua, our Messiah, because he was the greater scapegoat. He was the greater sacrifice. And of course, there is more here. The word used in Hebrew concerning the scapegoat when it carried the sins of the people and bore it into the desert is the Hebrew word nasa, which means to bear or can also mean to forgive. In Isaiah 53, one of the main messianic prophecies that talk about the Messiah son of Joseph and his suffering for our sin to bring atonement, it says he will nasa, the Messiah will nasa, carry or bear our sin. The same word used to describe the scapegoat. The word nasa is also used of Moses when he lifted up the serpent in the desert. And John 3 tells us, like Moses lifted up in the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. Messiah Nasa was lifted up on the cross to Nasa carry our burdens like the scapegoat did so that we might find forgiveness. He was the greater high priest who offered the greater sacrifice, not like the high priest that had to go year after year and offer sacrifices to atone for the sins of the people, but he offered a one-time sacrifice, a final sacrifice once and for all so that we might be purified, that we might be freed, and that we might be forgiven, and that our names might be inscribed indelibly, not for one year, but for all eternity in the Book of Life. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below, and invite your friends to join the conversation.